This is Kazuhiko Kurosawa, MIT scientist, bacterial warrior, research fiend. He has spent the past two years chasing an idea his boss thought was crazy. So we decided, or he decided, against my better judgment and against my advice, using my dollars to do this experiment of putting these two organisms together to see which one would win in the battle. It was an idea Kurosawa had stolen from nature. Take two bacteria that are natural enemies and see what happens when they fight. Army number one, Streptomyces. This bacterium had a nasty side, it had a dark side. This bacterium produced its own antibiotic, an antibiotic called actinomycin, and this antibiotic is, is truly vicious. Army number two, Rhodococcus. From its genetic code, this bacterium looked like it should be making antibiotics to defend itself, but no one had ever seen Rhodococcus do it. So that made us wonder, what's going on with these genes? Why does this organism even have these genes, and what might it be doing with these genes? Lab environments are like spas for microbes. Bacteria are coddled in petri dishes and cultures, safe from enemies. That's not how it works in nature. In the environment, no bacterium is living in isolation. No bacterium is an island. In the real world, organisms fight for food and territory. While chickens use beaks and wings, bacteria rely on powerful chemical weapons, antibiotics. The thought was that perhaps if we mimic their natural environment, some condition they see out in the real world, we could get them to respond by producing their antibiotics. That is, introduce other bacteria. And maybe in the presence of other bacteria, our rhodococcus might be forced to fight for its dinner. The trouble was, rhodococcus refused to fight back. Getting the bacterium to use its antibiotic producing power turned out to be much harder than the team had ever imagined. What we found is that in flask after flask after flask after flask, the streptomyces killed off the rhodococcus. But what we did find was that in one flask, just one out of hundreds of flasks, in one of these flasks, the rhodococcus won and the streptomyces disappeared. One strain of rhodococcus survived. The question was, how? They looked closer and were amazed to find that Rhodococcus had actually stolen genes from its rival. There's now a big chunk of Streptomyces DNA that is replicating, is living, is being propagated inside of the Rhodococcus cells. With its genome altered, Rhodococcus had made an antibiotic, one that had never before been seen in a lab. And it made it in a whole new way. So I think we've made a very unique discovery. If it is unique, that would be a potentially a real home run. Translating this principle to other molecules, other organisms, would be pretty, well, not, it would be major, big time stuff. If Sinsky's right, this discovery couldn't come at a better time. Antibiotic resistance is a growing problem. In the arms race between antibiotics and disease, disease has been winning. The world is saturated in, in a way by the use of antibiotic. So there's only two choices really. One has to find new ones that can kill organisms in new ways. Uh, you need new strategies for producing organisms, but most of the conventional procedures are gone. Someday you might be able to drop by the pharmacy and pick up a drug made by bringing nature to the lab. For now, the entire world supply of Rhodococcus's antibiotic, just a few precious milligrams, remains tucked away in this freezer. In the environment, no bacterium is living in isolation. No bacterium is an island. No, that's not what the real phrase is, is it? Regardless. <laughs> Do we want to make up any questions? <laughs> Your question's not even going to be there. Say, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's a good question. <laughs>
It will be bigger than DuPont, hopefully in my lifetime, but it will be. People think I'm crazy when I say that, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm visionary.